I have so many thoughts after watching this episode, and they're not all going to be popular, but I just want to sort of present them all here. Let me start by saying I am very reluctant to make any kind of clinical diagnosis based on what I've seen via some reality TV show that is heavily edited. But Cody's behavior in this episode was so concerning that it, it definitely feels clinically significant to me. If this is how he acts in other areas of his life, if this, if this is representative of who he is all the time, he, he, in my mind, meets the diagnostic criteria for narcissism. So let's just go through the episode chronologically. It starts off with truly visiting Cody and Robin. Truly feels, in my opinion, pretty uncomfortable. Cody feels, in my opinion, pretty uncomfortable. I feel bad for Truly. I can imagine being in her shoes. You leave your mom's house where you feel really supported and warm, and you go into this environment, which, don't ask me why, is so new to you. Like, clearly, there's been no effort prior to this point to create a relationship, a stronger relationship between Robin and Truly. Now, imagine if it was a healthier environment. Imagine if Cody and Robin and even Christine could put their emotions aside and think logically about how to take care of Truly in this case. Wouldn't it have made sense for Truly to spend time with Cody and Robin before Christine leaves? Shouldn't Truly have tried spending the night there before she took off? It's shocking to me that this is the first time that she spends the night there. And she shows up, and Cody has one expectation that she stays, and Truly has her mom, Christine, who has said, look, if you don't like it, you can come home. I get why Christine did that, and I can also tell you that that, that prevents Truly from, from integrating as easily, right? And now she's going to straddle the fence and decide, do I like it here, versus committing to being part of the Cody and Robin household. It's also shocking to me that Truly has to be at Robin's house and can't visit Cody at Janelle's house, where she obviously feels very comfortable, or at Mary's house. I mean, I guess... It's like sister wives don't work that way. It's got to be at Robin's house. I think the explanation would be that Robin's house is the biggest, but it's still wild to me that the adults around truly can't find a way to make this transition smoother for her. I think the reason is that they are all individually dealing with so much crap emotionally that they can't pull their heads out and think logically about this poor girl. Which brings us to the conversation that Cody had with Janelle over lunch, which was so uncomfortable. It's In my mind, I think about it like Cody has lost Christine and so he's now going around and he's checking the resolve of his troops. He's looking at his three, his three other sister wives and he's going, hey, are you in this with me? And she checks with Robin and Robin's all in. And he checks with Mary and Mary's being super deferential for a variety of reasons, but she's being super deferential. And then he gets to Janelle and he's saying, hey, are you in this with me? And Janelle's saying, I'm with you, but I'm not going to revert back to this patriarchal relationship you're trying to create. I'm not going to revert back to a new relationship. And, and Cody's saying something's wrong with us. There's a problem with us. And Janelle's saying, what are you talking about? We've had this relationship for the last couple of decades. Why are you trying to change it now? Why are you concerned about it now? So here's what I think happened. And it's, it's pure conjecture. I'm making massive assumptions here, but this is just my, this is my assumption. I think, you know, Janelle was married before, married to Mary's brother. She gets divorced, then marries Cody, enters into a polygamous family. She is not from a polygamous family, but she liked something about the family. My assumption is she liked being part of this big family. She wanted to have lots of kids. I think she wanted connection. I think that she didn't get that from Cody. I think that Cody wasn't able to attend to her and attend to Mary and eventually attend to Christine and eventually attend to Robin. So Janelle had to, as she said in this episode, be her own hero. And I think she became her own hero a long time ago, and she liked it. And I think that because she liked it, she got used to it, and that's how she's operated. And so I think she's been comfortable in the relation in, in a different kind of relationship than the other sister wives had because she's so independent. And now you have Cody saying, hey, I want to be connected with you. I want to have loyalty, right? And Cody has now redefined loyalty to mean subservience. I want you to be subservient to me like Robin is, right? Cody's going, hey, join the fold, be connected to me like Robin is. And Janelle's going, what are you talking about? For the last 20 years, I've been doing my own thing. There's no way I'm turning into Robin. And I think that's the friction point. I don't blame Janelle for having the relationship she has. I think that if she's happy, she's happy and that's wonderful. The only kind of feedback I would have or the only the only critique I would have is I see a lot of people in, in my work, that engage in relationships that they're not fully satisfied with for a long time before they verbalize it. 
And if they verbalize it and they don't get their needs met, they just quiet down and go do their own thing. And what happens eventually over time is you just sort of separate. If you don't ask for what you want and don't push for what you want in a relationship, you risk that relationship going the wrong direction. And to me, that happens all the time in the Brown family. Cody doesn't communicate well with the wives. They all sort of do their own thing. They don't communicate with each other. They don't communicate with him. And then they wonder why it's so fractured. So Cody's call for, hey, this isn't the relationship I want, I think is reasonable. I just think he's 20 years delayed in doing it. So I don't have a lot of sadness for the the loss of connection he feels with Janelle. Now, what I do feel sad about is the clip with Gabriel in it. That clip made me outraged. There is simple, I don't care how many kids you have, there is no excuse for not knowing your children's birthday. But that's not the issue here. It's not that Cody had an administrative glitch and missed somebody's birthday. The issue here is that Gabriel, he said, it, he, he said when he was interviewed, he goes, I shouldn't have done it, but I wanted to test my dad to see if he remembered my birthday. Because Gabriel lives in a world in which he thinks his dad doesn't think of him enough. Cody has a, has a big life, and Gabriel feels like a really small sliver of that, one that can be forgotten. And then you have this father who is so in his own world, so concerned about his own distress, so concerned about God knows what Cody's thinking about. He's so narcissistic that he doesn't understand the impact his arrogance is having on his family. Back to this discussion with Janelle, Cody says he has, he has friction with Janelle's kids because they are frustrated with his COVID rules. And Cody is sitting there in that conversation with Janelle saying, I refuse to reach out to them. I want Gabe and Garrison to call me and apologize. I want them to apologize to Robin. And it's like, who's the freaking adults around here? Step up, be a father, and call these kids and deal with the friction. Care about them enough to get uncomfortable. But he wants to sit there on his sort of arrogant stoop and wait for everybody to come to him. It's all about Cody's ego. It's disgusting. I just hope that as Gabriel grows up, he is able to separate himself from how his father treats him. He he can't personalize it. This is a this is a flaw in Cody. It has nothing to do with Gabriel. And then in the most ironic shift of all time, the two people that have been the most diligent about COVID get it and get it bad. Robin gets COVID. She goes into the hospital. Cody's got COVID. Some of the kids have COVID. You know, and Cody the whole time, it's just it's just back to this, this, this diagnosis of being a narcissist, right? He's not really worried about Robin, what he's worried about is his experience of isolation. What he's worried about is, is whether or not he's being taken care of enough. He drops Robin off at the hospital, and he's in the parking lot going, oh, gee, should I go in there? I sure have got it, man. I could sure use some support. Uh, I don't know. I, I, could, I wish I had a, a lung scan also. I mean, it's just like me, 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 me. Meanwhile, Robin's in there, can't breathe, and she sounds really bad. But it was just a... And it's like, I know that I have watched so much Sister Wives, and I'm so frustrated with Cody that I am more negative towards him. But, God, I mean, let me know what you think in the comments. God, it felt like it was just about him and nobody else. And then I wanted to throw my phone at the TV when Cody talks, he starts crying, talking about how Robin's daughter, Aurora, who hasn't got COVID, is feeling isolated in the basement. And she comes up and she goes, I just want to spend time with you. And Cody starts crying, I want to spend time with you too. And it's like, you SOB, if, if, if any of your other kids, if any of your other wives saw that, they would be so hurt by the fact that you're so clearly invested in Robin and her kids and not with anybody else. It, it, again, he has no concept of it because he's a narcissist. He just, that's, that's what this looks like. He, it's not that he's trying to be mean. He is just so self-interested he, he just cares about the people that make him feel good, the subservient ones that he is unable to recognize the impact he's having on the rest of his family. That's it, in my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all those things. Thank you for listening.